when you think about the innovation and the progress that's happening across the payment space, what do you foresee? Whether Marquetta's going to play a role or not, I mean, it sounds like you guys are. are. Um, give us an idea of what do you see coming down? What as we as consumers and businesses, what are we going to see start happening over the next five, 10 years? Some of the things that you're really excited about, they're like, hey, this is going to make things easier in payments. I'm really curious what your perspective is because obviously you're on the inside since you're building it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's awesome. I, I, you and I have already talked about quite a bit of this, right? It it used to be paper, and and, and now it's uh, computerized. But certainly, in my own experience, even just in the last few years, more and more of my as a consumer, I mean, not not in context of Marketa, but as a consumer, more and more of my experience is centered around my cell phone. And even if I'm using a physical card, I get my balance on my cell phone. I, I can look at recent transactions and, and make sure that I know what's going on. I can pay attention to my spending. All of that is really becoming mobile first. And frankly, between that and, and some of the things around AI that help provide better insight and better data, new kinds of rewards and opportunities to help me save and earn. I think that some of these things are really, really exciting. And when you think about each little individual one, you might go, ah, oh, that doesn't matter too much. But out of my experience, we'll look back at a couple of years of this innovation and the actual experience as a cardholder, as a consumer, is really, really different. And it's much more fine-tuned to me. Is it critical if they get that one tweet or not? On one hand, you're like, yeah, it's just noise and, and you know, it's one out of a thousand who's gonna care. On the other hand, if you're micro-targeting, if you're A-B testing, if you're trying to really use this to build data and an understanding of your audience, then missing one can be really critical, right? Because you, you, you send out one particular test, one particular scenario, and you have completely erroneous data now as a result of it, you build the wrong inference and, and you go make a change that's really not appropriate. So the parallel here that I'm trying to build is sort of the card program for one. You and I probably both have signed up over the years for the, the Delta card or, or whatever it happens to be. I think you said Hilton a minute ago. That's a particular audience, right? And, and we, we travel, we stay in this hotel, these points are valuable to us. But you and I probably have all the same program, right? We've got the same rewards, we have the same point structure, et cetera, et cetera. Well, with a much more modern platform underlying all of that, you and I could have a very different program. Maybe I only travel for work. Maybe you only trade, I, I wish this was true for you, it probably isn't. Maybe you only travel for <laughs> pleasure. The kinds of hotels you're gonna stay in, the kind of rewards, the kinds of benefits that you and I would need in that world are going to be different. It becomes untenable to get to the point where every single card has a different almost experience attached to it without a much, much, yeah. much more modern platform behind the scenes. Lots of data, lots of AI, much greater abilities to process and manage these things as opposed to humans needing to kind of set them up and say, you know, this audience, we're, we're, we're going to support this way and this audience, we're going to support that way. When you were talking about the evolution, I started thinking about what have I noticed in the last couple of years, right? Like things I noticed that I like a lot, real-time notifications of payment. Like that is, I like it gives that. gives you comfort. Right? Real-time notifications of credit card use. It gives me a lot of comfort. I've also noticed that fraud attempts have dropped dramatically. Um, in the early 2000s, middle 2000s even, I think everybody got a Walmart charge for $500. Like, what is this? You know, you would see it like, and you'd have to dispute it. And of course, most people that disputed them, they would win their judgment. But I know there's a lot of money lost in that process. It feels like fraud has gone down a lot. I know that credit cards, like you mentioned, now that they're integrated more to, or I guess the physical card, but also your mobile phone are interconnected. It now knows like, hey, you're in location A, there's a swipe in location B, that doesn't seem right. Like you're not at your computer. I know they can tell that I'm at my computer. So I don't think you're buying something physically in Texas while you're physically in North Carolina. You'll get a, you know, are you trying to buy this right now? No, you know what I mean? Like. And I think of all these like mainly really noticeable in fraud. I mean, I'm, I think that is for sure something I've noticed um, as a better thing. When you think about the future, crypto is all the rage right now. Other payment methods. A lot of times that people are talking about like peer to peer lending, what could potentially happen there. I'm personally a huge, I think peer to peer lending can change the world. Uh, I really do believe that because of how hard it is to get credit when you are starting a business. It's like really, I mean, for those of you who has never started a business, like it's, it's not likely, like you can't get credit, right? 
<laughs> like you are, you might be more likely to get a VC deal than you are to get a credit card issued to you. <laughs> like, like getting credit when you're a, getting credit that, of significance is is really tough. And so, give us where is your perspective on these other alter, alternative forms of payments and alternative funding methods? Are they on the horizon? Are they in like the next? three years? Are they the next 10 years? Or are they really far away? There's a lot of obviously buzz about these potential new financial financial tools. My sense is we have these things today. I used Cash App, person-to-person transfer, P2P transfer to pay for something a couple weeks ago, or I guess just last week. I think what's interesting is how do we bridge all these worlds, right? And, and that's what's kind of unique about payment cards because they have the reach. I mean, you and I were just talking about international travel, a pretty remote telephone connected terminal with a modem that you'd never seen before, and yet it all worked. And so I think what, what's really interesting is how do you support a company? How do you support individuals who want to innovate and disrupt and experiment, but give them the best of both worlds, give them the reach to all the merchants out there already, all the cardholders out there already. How do you sort of connect these worlds so that you don't have to make this mammoth jump over the wall, right? You don't have to say either kind of in the the current main payments economy, or I'm gonna jump entirely over and I'm gonna be in the crypto economy. And frankly, what, what will help those innovations and disruptions and experiments be tested out and, and kind of the, the the successful ones, the ones that make the world better, that remove some frustration or friction or pain from either a consumer or a commercial context. You can give them reach, you can give them sort of almost a bridge into the current world. I think that will only help. And there'll be setbacks in the space, there'll be experiments that don't work, there'll be things that we try that seem great on paper and when you get out there and really do it, you're like, eh, maybe I don't wanna buy coffee with my eyeball on a Thursday, who knows what it is, right? Um, But the more we can empower innovators and disruptors and entrepreneurs to try these things, to see what fits, get access to that support, get VC funding, get loans, whatever it happens to be, the more these things that are out there and tried, the more likely are that we have, you know, real lasting value creation that helps consumers and it helps commercial enterprises in their needs to make payments and and move money each and every day. IT Visionaries is powered by Salesforce Platform and Dreamforce. Did you know the very best Dreamforce sessions are available free on salesforce.com slash plus? We recommend watching the platform and MuleSoft Keynote to get the download on doing more with less and increasing efficiency with automation.